Yes, yes, 5.4 gigahertz, i9, 8900K, 5.4, baby! So what do we have here? Yes, this is Tally Hose. This is Tally Hose Gaming Beast, the gaming rig I've used for the last, what, year or so. And yes, look there, Z390H Gaming. Like, this is literally the cheapest Strix Azus motherboard you can get. Now, I've used the Rampage and Extremes and everything, the best motherboards I've actually used. This one actually overclocked better than the best one. That's slightly... I don't know why, it just did 5 gigahertz the whole time, right? This has been going 5 gigahertz the whole year and never had an issue. And it just shows you, you don't need the most expensive motherboard. And, you know, I've swapped it over. I had a 9900K now, I'll put an i5 in there now. Don't need it. Didn't give me any performance benefits. Um, yes, for, you know, content creation and stuff like that, but for gaming, no. So you don't have to buy the most expensive motherboard. Now I'm going to show you the new Z490 motherboard from Asus. The, this is the one you want to get. Unless you want extra bells and whistles, you don't need to get the most expensive one. And there have been Drama Queen channels saying, don't buy these motherboards, only got four phases or something or whatever. VRM's no good and... No, they don't even know what they're talking about because I pump over 200 watts into this thing and never has the VRM buckled ever. The, you know, the CPU buckles before the VRM. And what I mean by that is the CPU just gets too hot and thermally throttles. It's not the VRM that buckles. There's no VRM throttling. Uh, maybe if you want to, you know, you could sustain, you know, over 200 watts for a very long time, you might get some VRM throttling, but really the CPU is going to throttle way before the VRM does. And in the gaming scenario, it's not even an issue at all. So let's have a look at the new one. All right, so now let's have a look at this ROG Strix Z490 A gaming motherboard. And I think you'll agree, it doesn't look like an entry level sort of Strix. I mean, it's not the budget, but it's, you know, it looks premium, doesn't it? Nice silver finish. We have RGB, actually, two RGB headers on it as well. Of course, supports all the 10th generation CPUs. Z490 chipset, up to 4600 megahertz RAM. One thing you probably don't want to skimp on is your RAM. Now the RAM I have here is Crucial Ballistics Gaming Memory. And it's really important, especially if you're building a Ryzen system, because you can get these Strix motherboards for Ryzen as well. 3200 is probably the sweet spot, which is what I have here. But the timings, right? You want the gaming timings. And that's what these ballistics are. Crucial memory is actually Micron memory. It's the retail brand of Micron. I only trust probably Micron and Samsung with RAM, but I always go with Crucial and that's for laptops. And I'll leave in the description, you know, my recommended RAM for laptops, which is always Crucial because it has Micron chips. And I'll actually leave a link to these in the description as well. Do yourself a favor, don't cheap out on your RAM. Make sure you get good quality, Crucial, you know it's good quality and gaming, you know, ballistics here, you're going to get the good memory timings. And especially if you go on AMD, you want those tight gaming timings there. And I have two models here. I actually have the RGB and the non-RGB version and they've got heat spreaders too. So, you know, they're not going to get that hot. But anyway, it does have four slots, DDR4 of course. You have four times 16 slots, that's 16 by 8 by 4. And actually have the steel guard around them as well. You actually have USB-C for your case. That's on the board. You have two RGB headers there. So you're covered for RGB. You get Aura Sync and stuff like that. BIOS flashback on the back. Integrated plate. You don't have to put those crappy tin plates on the back where you got all your I.O. there. And there's plenty of I.O. here. USB-C as well. You know, it is the entry level so you don't get Wi-Fi. And you don't get the 2.5 gig networking. But if you're going to game, and if you want to see my build of this, please let me know in the comments and I'll show you my build. But yeah, for overclocking, you're going to get 5 gigahertz if your chip is capable. The VRM will not buckle. I don't care what these drama queens say. My last one, the one I just showed you before, 5 gigahertz all day long. And people were saying, oh, the VRM's not good at no. The CPU will get too hot and throttle before the VRM gives in. And that's the case on this as well. So I don't know if I'm actually going to go with this one because I actually got sent a motherboard by MSO, a free one. So 
Maybe I might use that because I've got to send this one back. It's got everything you want, you know, niche con capacitors for the audio. I have a friend that builds high-end water cooling PCs with no expense spared. And I actually sold him my extreme motherboard because the entry-level Strix will do everything for you in terms of gaming. The only time you want to get those higher-end motherboards is when you want extra bells and whistles. I want a 10 gig network and I want 2 by 16s I want a DIM.2 slot and, and this has two M.2 slots. So, you know, if you want a board with three, well, get a higher-end board. But if you're just going to be gaming or even content creation, this board is not going to hold you back at all. And I put my money where my mouth is. This is what I buy when it's just purely my gaming PC, which I do do some content creation on as well. And as I said, my mate builds high-end PCs, right? Water-cooled. He always uses a Zeus and he always uses Strix. Even though, like, for example, the Strix graphics card is going to be taken off the cooler, which is like the main part of the Strix, because he knows, you know, the last thing you want to happen on a water-cooling build is you have to change your motherboard or your graphics card because it's a nightmare. You've got to undo all that piping, all that stuff. It's just, yeah, that's why he buys a Zeus, because he knows it's reliable and he likes the BIOS. I like the BIOS. they got the best BIOS, without a doubt. And you know they're going to be reliable. I mean, he actually uses used to use someone else he had a couple of duds from that company and now he's been using exclusively a zeus and never had any issues and he swears by him so he builds the highest end overclocks them the maximum and my gaming rig was on the basic strix the entry level strix five gigahertz all the time this is all you need i highly recommend this if you want to see benchmarks and that let me know i actually will do a 10th gen build so if i'm going to spend my money now on a motherboard just for gaming i'll just get this because there's no point me spending all this money with all these bells and whistles i'm not even going to use it this is just going to be you know i'm going to overclock the five gigahertz it's a nice steady state I'm going to get maximum performance gaming, especially with an Intel chips. They're still fastest for gaming, no matter what you say. Like, if maybe you want to rise them for some other reason, for multi-core or whatever, but for gaming, still Intel is the way to go. And it's got everything I want. USB-C, two M.2s is enough. RGB, looks good, looks clean. I do like it with this white setup here. And I highly recommend this motherboard. So thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one. Tally ho.